Today I'm going to have a look at a file manager that's sort of a joke, but also not really because it's actually a good piece of software. So this is by Dylan A. Raps, the guy who made Neofetch, who is notorious for making a bunch of random little pieces of software like this. This is a program by the name of FFF. The, uh, let's just say the Flipping Fast File Manager. So if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because it's basically NNN written in Bash. If you were to take out basically all of the features of NNN and just strip it down to the absolute bare minimum that you need a file manager to be. So the reason you'd want to use something like this is because it'll work on basically everything. And if we have a look at the dependencies, it needs Bash, it needs the core utils, and XDG utils are optional if you want to actually be able to open files. You can obviously use other things if you're on like macOS or Haiku. You're going to be using something different to XDG open. But by default, most Linux distros are going to default to XDG open. And all of the other dependencies are only there if you want to do image previews, which I don't have working in Alacrity anyway, so I don't really care about that. So if we want to install it, that is really easy. It is available in the standard repos on Arch, so if we go sudo pacman dash s ffff and I've already got it installed and as you see it is a very tiny program because it doesn't really do much. It's basically just a bash script so it's very small. So let's just have a quick look at how the application works and just what it looks like. So I've customized it a little bit. There is a little bit of customization you can do and like with NNN all of the customization is done through environment variables. I'll show you that in just a moment, but let's just look at how this actually works. So like most other file managers for your terminal, you have the option of using your arrow keys or using Vim keys. I'm gonna stick with Vim keys just because I like Vim keys. So we can do things like say, we wanna mark this with a copy, mark this with a copy, mark this with a copy. And then if we want to paste that somewhere, now that we've got these highlighted, all we have to do is go to where we want to paste it, like let's say in the local directory, and if we were to press P here, it should give us a prompt in just a moment to say that we're going to copy it, but I think those folders were a bit too big, so let's not do it with those ones. Let's just try it with a single file. Let's try it with this right here. So let's say we want to copy this one, and we want to paste it in this Windows folder here. So if we go P right here, as you can see, it is now pasted that. Right, with the pasting it doesn't actually give you a prompt, but it will give you a prompt if you want to do deletion. So if we were to mark this one here and mark it for a deletion by pressing D and then we press P again. So, so all of the mark actions are done with P and basically the way you determine which action you're going to do is the key you press to actually do the mark. So in this case, I pressed D. So that means we're marking for deletion and it's got a little trash thing down the bottom here. Now it doesn't actually have to work with trash. By default, what it's going to do is move the files to a trash location. I've set it up to work with trash put, but if you'd rather have it work with something like RM, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. So let's just trash that. And now that's been put into our trash. So let's go clean up that stuff I just copied before. Trash that, trash that, press P, it gives us the prompt again, and then we press Y, and then it adds it to our trash. If you wanna go have a look at our trash, all we have to do is press T. By default, this would take you to, I think it's .local slash share slash FFF. But as I said, I've changed my trash location to be where the rest of my system uses its trash. So mine's just a little bit different. If we want to go back to that last directory we're in, we could press minus and that will take us directly back to that last directory. Doesn't matter where we were, it will jump between the two last directories we were in. But if we want to go up some directories, we can use H if we're using the Vim keys, left if we're using arrow keys, or we could use backspace. Either of those keys will do the exact same thing. If you want to go into a folder, you can press right, you can press L, or you can press enter. All of them will do the exact same thing as well. So if you try to go into a file though, let's go to my home and try to go into this notes file here. If I try to go into that, it's just going to open it up with XDG open. So if it's a text file, you might have it open with something like Nano, you might have it open with Vim, depending on what you want to work with. One thing that people frequently complained about when I did my video on LF is the fact that it doesn't have bulk renaming. FFF actually does though, which I think is really cool. So let's make some test files. Now I've changed the binding to actually make a file, but the default binding is F and the default binding for a new directory is N. I've got making a new file bound to I and making a new folder bound to F just because I think that's, it's a bit easier for me to remember. So if I press I, we can make a new file. We'll call this one test, we'll call this one test one, and we'll call this one test two. 
Okay, so if we were to go and actually highlight these with the bulk rename command, which is by pressing B, so B lets you mark with a bulk, and then if we were to press P, the bulk action command, that will bring up a buffer. Now, I assume this will work if you're using other text editors like Nano. I'm using Vim though, just because I like Vim. So let's say we were to add just the word this to the start of all of these. Then we save this, and then we save this again, and it will actually execute all of these commands in here. So if you want to modify any of these, you can do that right now, but I'm not going to bother doing that. As you can see, now it's actually changed the name of all of those files. So as I said before, you can also make a folder. I've got, or I, I guess a directory, but I've got it bound to F just because folder makes more sense to me. We'll call it, this is a folder, and that's made a folder. One other thing I didn't mention is the fact that you can always jump directly back to your home directory of pressing tilde. So if we go into here, go into here, and press tilde, it will take us back to the home directory. One other thing I didn't mention is that you can do a slash to search. This is fairly common in a lot of file managers because it's a thing that Vim does, and it's just a really sensible way to do a search. So if we press slash, it brings up a prompt down the bottom here to do a slash. And let's say we start writing in scripts, open this up, Start writing in like ulcer, open this up. Yeah, it works as you'd expect a search to do. Nothing too special about that. Now, the only marks I didn't go over is you can also do a mark for a symbolic link. So if you wanna make symbolic links from FFF, that is something you can do. And you can also do a mark for a move. So that is bound to M. But if you don't like any of these bindings, I think every single binding except for things like go to home are rebindable. And the way you do that is by setting environment variables. Now, all of these are explained within the man page for FFF. So if we have a look at that, it's actually a pretty good man page. I'll just kill this screen key so it doesn't get in our way anymore. Kill all screen key. Okay, cool. As you can see, it will go over all of the bindings like we see on the GitHub page here. So you don't have to go to the GitHub page to find these. Sadly, there isn't a way to bring them up within the application, but it's not a big deal. You can always just open up the man page really easily. So there's some stuff I didn't go over in here, like opening up a shell, but it's pretty straightforward how it works and things like also showing the details of a file. An important thing this does do by default, it will output the last path that you were on. So if you want to use it for something like CD on exit, that is explained on the GitHub page. So if we go down here, right down to the bottom somewhere around here, is it on this page? Maybe it's not even on this page. No, it was a bit further up actually. Okay, so CD on exit. If you want to do CD on exit, it's got an example in here on how to do it in Bash and ZSH. I don't use CD on exit most of the time, but if it's something that you care about, then FFF will just work with that straight out of the box. Now let's go on to the configuration. I'll put this on my second desktop so we have some more space. So there's not much you can configure in this application in the way of colors, because as you can see, it's a very basic looking application. We can configure the status color that's done with this variable right here. We can configure the directory color, which is done with this one right here. We can configure the selection color. The selection color is used when you're doing a mark. So if you say, mark this, mark this, mark this, that is your selection color. And then your cursor color is basically wherever your cursor is currently sitting. It's pretty straightforward how that works. So the way you'd actually go about configuring these is what you'll do is if you're on bash, then you'll go into your bash RC file. If you're on ZSH, you'll go into your ZSH emp file. I'll bring that one up right now. And what you're gonna do in here is basically just set some environment variables, nothing too special there. So if we go way down to FFF, as you can see, it's really straightforward how this works. All you're doing is writing in this right here and then whatever you're setting it to. So I'm setting things like my trash command, my trash location, my key for make dir and things like that. And we'll go further into those in just a moment. So we're gonna also set our text editor like this, the file opener. I would recommend just fixing your file opener rather than setting a specific text editor. But if you wanna go and set them differently, then you can do that yourself. But as I said, I would recommend just fixing up your file opener just to make sure it's opening stuff up properly. But I guess some people use graphical editors and they wanna have a different editor when they're working within their terminal. For me, I do everything in NeoVim, so I guess that's not really a problem for me. If you want to disable FFF CD on exit, you can do that. There's not really any reason to, it will just write to a file every time you quit, but if for whatever reason you do want to do that, then that is something you can do. Now the rest of this stuff is all pretty boring stuff, it's like setting the trash location, setting the trash command, 
One thing I didn't mention earlier is that you can actually have favorites in this application. And the way this works is basically you'll press a key from one to nine and it will just jump to whatever you've got in here. So you can jump directly to a file if you want to open up a file directly or you can jump directly to a folder. So let's say we use some of the ones that I've got in here. So I've got three favorites set, one for my anime folder, one for my uni folder and one for my wallpapers folder. If I press one, that jumps into here, two jumps into here, three jumps into here. Pretty straightforward how that works. I know with NNN you had to press a key and then you could do your jump. This one, it doesn't have the key first. It just does the jump directly. So it's a little bit easier to do. I still am not a fan of this over the way that LF does it, where if you start typing out one of your basically jumps, it's gonna try to fill out the rest. So as you can see, it basically provides a way in case you accidentally forget what you're trying to write out, which I think is a little bit easier to work with, but I guess if you want the absolute bare minimum for favorite paths, this is probably all you need really. Two things I would recommend setting just to make the application look a little bit nicer is the mark format and the file format. So by default, the files are rubbing up directly against the side of your terminal, which I think just, it doesn't really look the best. I like to have a little bit of a buffer and then have the files. And then the mark format basically changes how the marks look. So I think by default, it'll just have this asterisk on the end, which is fine. And it, it's probably fine if you don't really care about it, but I like the, files that I've marked just to stand out really well. So I like to have maybe another asterisk there, or as you can see, I've got a greater than sign, which I just think looks a little bit nicer. It's kind of an aesthetic thing, but yeah, same with having this bit of a buffer here. It's also an aesthetic thing. I just think that it looks a little bit better. And the way you do that is by just setting FFF underscore mark underscore format. And this value here, this percentage F basically just means the file that you're currently on. And that's all explained in the man page here. So there's a bit of an explanation here of how that works. Now, as for setting the key bindings, I don't know why there is this massive line going down through here. I feel like this is supposed to be a joke of some sort and I haven't actually bothered to read it. But yeah, there's this line going through here. Ignoring that though, you can set pretty much every single key binding in the application. The one thing I noticed you couldn't set, unless I just happened to miss it, is there's no way to rebind the key to open up a W3M image preview. That's the one thing I noticed is missing. Oh, you can even rebind the go to home. So if you don't want it to be on tilde, you can change that. So it seems like the only thing that's missing then is the key to open up a W3M preview. I don't know why that one's missing out of all of them, but it is a little bit annoying. Now, if I remember correctly, doesn't NNN not have a way to rebind keys? I might be thinking of a different file manager, but I feel like NNN was the one that I tried that you couldn't rebind keys with. If I'm wrong about that, someone correct me, but I feel like that was the case. So if that is the case, this is one of the things that FFF actually does do much better. Because if I remember the keys in NNN, I wasn't a big fan of. FFF, they seem to be pretty sensible defaults, but if you do ever want to change them for whatever reason, like say, I don't know, you're really into reverse Vim bindings because you're a horrible person or something, then that is something that you can set up. Overall, I think this is a really, really good file manager. I'm not going to switch to it from LF just because I like having features. Features are nice. And LF is a very basic application by default and you can add a bunch of stuff to it. This is basic and you can't do anything about it unless you want to go and modify the script. But if you're running something like FFF, you're going into it expecting it to be a very basic application. That's the only reason you'd want to use it. So I guess it's a good thing. Now, you might be wondering at this point, why does this application exist? And luckily for us, Dylan Airwraps actually did include an explanation. It, it just exists because, no reason, doesn't matter. One other cool thing is that FFF.Vim exists. So if you want to use FFF as a file picker for Vim, that is something that you can do. Now you can also do this with other plugins like float term, but if you want to use FFF.Vim, then that's something else you can do as well. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in this video. As I said, it's a really cool file manager, but I'm not going to run it as like my daily file manager. If if I ever need something really, really basic though, then this is probably going to be the first thing I go to because even though it's written in Bash, it's actually pretty fast. Now, I know it had a bit of problem when I was trying to copy like my entire documents folder and 
whatever else I was trying to copy there. As long as you don't copy anything like that, it's fine. But that's kind of a problem with the core utils rather than being a problem with FFF. There's not really anything can be done about that. It would be nice if FFF did have, I guess, a, um, a things telling you how long the copy was going to take. There are applications that will actually do that with things like move and things like copy. But it's not really a big deal and I can kind of accept it the way it is because it is just trying to be a super basic file manager that's just doing the bare minimum of what you need a file manager to do. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Tiki, Andrew, Platten, Dot Road, Tony, Ocularia, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just anything else you want on Amazon. Now, I did notice that my uh, microphone was in the corner of the video this entire time, but I'm recording this just before I have to go to work, so I don't feel like re-recording it. You guys can accept that it's there. You probably didn't even notice it until I pointed it out. So if you want to go subscribe to the podcast where things like this are very common because I don't really care about the podcast and that's kind of just where I do whatever happens. Go check out the podcast. It's available on library and YouTube. And if you want to listen to the audio version where you don't get to see these problems, you just get to hear the audio problems, then go check out the podcast wherever podcasts are available. Also remember to subscribe to this channel and ding the little bell icon down below for whatever reason. And also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and... I'm out. That just lagged right at the end there.